pharmacist. Yeah. There we go. All right, so the road to becoming a pharmacist um, by me, Samina Hussein. So a lot of you, a lot of you, the initial question is, why should I do pharmacy? There's so many careers out there. You guys, you know, heard about why you should be a doctor. Well, this is why you should be a pharmacist. It's actually really similar, I think, to why you should be a doctor. Um, obviously, you're going to be helping people. I think that's the number one reason why people go into pharmacy. It's really rewarding in that sense where you're helping people, you know, um, you're always going to be around sick people, and they're always going to be really appreciative of everything you have to do for them. And the one thing um, that I think distinguishes pharmacy from medicine is that pharmacy is actually really flexible. And alhamdulillah, like, it's, re it's a really good career, I think, for the sisters because you're not going to be on call. Um, you can have that regular 9 to 5 job if you want. If you want to be in a hospital, you can have that, you know, the crazy schedule. It's really up to you. You can work part-time. And then on top of that, even while you do that, it's enough to, you know, have a staple job and actually make a good amount of money while you're doing it. So, you know, if sisters want to have a career of their own, it's a good path to take. All right, so um, a timeline of what pharmacy looks like. So obviously if you got your four years of high school, and then you can do either two to four years of undergrad. It's really up to you, um, depending on how long it takes you to get all your credits done. And then the actual pharmacy school is going to be four years. And then you, um, post pharmacy, you have two options. You can either do one or two years of residency, and I'll go into more of what that is. Or you can do a one to two years of a fellowship. I know um, in medicine, it's the fellowship follows a residency. In pharmacy, a residency and a fellowship is actually two different things. All right, so starting with high school, um, this is like kind of like I think Brother Usman had said, high school is where it starts. Um, you want to make sure you, you try to take as many science classes as you can. You know, AP Bio, AP Chemistry would probably be a really good idea. When I was in high school, I didn't take AP Chem, but I did take AP Biology, and it's a really good prerequisite to, um, to know if you like the field or not. Uh, you know, make sure you're maintaining that GPA. Uh, it's, GPA for anything, I think it's always a good cushion. Schools are always looking at what GPA you have. And then interning and volunteering. A lot of people think, you know, I'm in high school, I'm too young. But there's actually um, programs in hospitals where you can shadow a doctor. I know there's a program in a hospital in um, Pennsylvania where every Friday they have you rotate between different departments in a hospital. So you can get to know if you actually like the healthcare system. And then it's a really good way to decide if, if, science, is, if science is for you because I know a lot of people who have done these things and have realized, I really don't like this. I don't like working with people. I don't like, you know, seeing sick people all the time. It can kind of become a little bit draining after a while. And um, what I did, as the sister said, is I did a direct entry program. So what this is, it's a little bit different from doing, you know, your undergrad and then going, applying to pharmacy school. It's straight out of high school. So there is, I'm not exactly sure how many programs there are in the U.S., but the one I went to was Philadelphia College of Pharmacy. And what you do is you actually apply to the pharmacy program, and you get in straight from high school. So what you would do is two years undergrad, and then you would automatically be into pharmacy school. It's all about try, um, staying in versus having to reapply. So um, the good thing about this, it's a six-year straight track. The only thing is make sure you know this is what you want to do, because once you're in, you're kind of stuck with it. You don't want to, you know, waste time doing it and then realizing, I don't like this. Um, the awesome thing about doing a direct program is you don't have to take your PCAT. A PCAT, you know, uh, I don't know how much you, how much you guys know about it, but it's a really daunting task. It's, it's like the MCAT. It's like one of those six-hour exams. you got to study for it. So if you do this, you don't have to take it. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I did it. Um, and also, something in high school you have to keep in mind is deadlines, deadlines. Everything after high school, you have deadlines, and there's no one going to um, be there to tell you, hey, listen, your deadline's coming up. You need to, you know, you need to push yourself. This is going to be all on you. You've got to take the responsibility for it. All right, so once um, you're finished with high school, you decide pharmacy, you know, it's a possibility. You've got college. So this is undergrad. Um, like I said before, you can do either a minimum of two to four years. Uh, you actually have the option of graduating with the bachelor's or, you know, do you, do all the requisites you need and then you don't, you know, not graduate with anything. I highly, highly recommend graduating with the bachelor's in case pharmacy isn't what you like and at least you have something to fall back on. So, but you do have the option of just doing two years without anything. Um, and another thing is you want to make sure you maintain at least a GPA of 3.5 or above. I think that's like a, a B plus or like an A or above. Just because when you're applying to pharmacy schools, there's two things they really look at. It's your PCAT and your GPA. 
Um, they're not going to look at, you know, I mean, they look at what classes you take, but in the end, it depends on those two things. So the GPA tells them a lot, you know, whether you're a strong student, you're a strong studier. So make sure you're keeping that in mind, you're following that. And like, I, um, this is going to be like a reoccurring theme, interning and getting experience. It's a really cutthroat world. I'm sure you guys know now, especially in this economy, it's really hard to get a job. So they're going to be looking at every little thing that you can. So you really want to make sure you stand out somehow. And interning and um, getting a job is really good experience. It not only tells you, um, gives you a good idea of what the field is actually like, but you, you, know, you make money um, and you get a lot of experience and you build a lot of connections too. And also, college is a time to create a support system. You know, um, I know this hasn't really have to do with pharmacy, but make sure you make friends and you're uh, you're part of the MSA there. You're part of ac extracurricular activities because, you know, even if they're not in the same major as you, they will become an asset later on in life when you need them for, you know, a favor here, a favor there. Um, and also, huge, huge thing, get to know your professors no matter where you are, high school, college, you know, um, graduate school. Make sure you know your professors because... In the end, they're the ones that are going to be writing your recommendations letters. And those, um, I was actually just talking to a friend the other day, and she's in the position of looking at, she, she's my year, and she's in the position of looking at other people's applications. And she's like, some, some professors write, eh, this person's okay. And other professors will write, you know, this is a great student, this is someone you want. So you want to make sure you build that relationship with that professor so they do write that good stuff about you, and they do, um, you know, they do praise you. Because if you think about it, um, your scores, your GPA and your scores, they only tell you how good you are with your textbook. Uh, fields like pharmacy and medicine, it's a lot of people interaction and recommendations really tell them this person, you know, they're able to communicate, they're, they're personable and it's someone you want to work with versus, yeah, they can just make good scores. All right, so what classes to fo focus on when you're, when you're in college? So it's basically biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, um, anatomy, physiology, and math. So chemistry and organic chemistry, the two I kind of want to go over. Um, for the PCAT, they're a huge, huge deal. Um, the PCAT, a lot of that information is going to be on the PCAT. But honestly, once I got into pharmacy, once I was in pharmacy school, you barely use it. So if you feel like chemistry isn't your strong point, and same with organic chemistry, don't let that get you down. Because honestly, in when I was actually like through the four years pharmacy school, I probably use that very rarely, very rarely. I know a lot of people think, oh, you know, pharmacy is a lot of chemistry. Unless you actually want to make drugs, if you want to go into the research part of it, you're not going to use that. So what you're really, really, but do study it for your PCAT. Um, what you're really going to need is anatomy, physiology, math, and biology. So a lot of pharmacy is that because you have to know how the body works. And then math um, becomes a really big, um, it comes into play a lot when you're actually doing the calculations. Pharmacy is a lot of calculations, you know, um, how much medicine to give based on, you know, a person's body. I mean, it's, it's a lot to go into, but know that math is a big part of it. And anatomy and physiology, which is the body. And so depending on what college you want to go to, a lot of colleges have a pre-pharmacy track. And so they'll tell you exactly which classes you need to take, what requirements there are. And every school, every pharmacy school has its own requirement. Um, they'll tell you exactly. But basically, it's going to be these classes plus some humanities. You know, they want you to be well-rounded. So, you know, take journalism, take philosophy, take any, take all those, I don't, I don't want to call them fluff classes, but take those classes that interest you too because they do look at that as well. And this time in your life is really a good time to decide if this is what you really want because at this point, you've got a bigger understanding of what, you know, what's, um, what's to come later on. All right, so like I said, a PCAT, if you decide to not do the direct program and you decide to do, you know, your undergrad and then go into and start applying for pharmacy schools, PCAT is going to be your best friend. So um, first thing you should know is lots of studying. It's a lot, a lot of studying. I, I didn't take it, but I have talked to people who have taken it. I've seen people who have transferred into my school who took it. And the one major theme is that it's a lot of studying, it's a lot of hard work. Um, people say they study for about two to three months, about six hours a day. And I, I talked to someone who said they did the Kaplan book inside out and they thought they would get 100 and they came out with like a 75. It's a lot of hard work. It's a hard test. Um, like I said, it's a six-hour exam. And But the main things, you, um, like I said,